All right, everybody, welcome back to the Beans No Ball podcast. This is episode six. I'm David. That's Christian. Let's get started right here. Y'all know the drill already. Six episodes in. We're going to go over the week four uh, recap. We're going to go over our predictions, see how we're doing so far in these four weeks into some football. And then we're going to be going over the week five preview. So to start things off, let's go over the Thursday night game. The Dolphins missed the Bengals, man. So we already know what happened with Tua. Went down really, really bad with that with that concussion again. So every you know controversy going around with that medical staff, whether he was supposed to be cleared or not. Clearly showed he wasn't, you know. But, but um Bengals took advantage of that. They won 27-15. So not bad, not bad. Bengals seem to kind of get their rhythm going again. Joe Bird, 13 yards shy of 300, two touchdowns. So not bad, not bad right now. But right now the Dolphins are still three and one. So, I mean, that's some good signs here, but it would just confirm Tua will not be playing next week against the Jets. As of right now, pretty much he's going to stay like that. And it's good too, right? We can't risk him going to, uh, what's it called? We can't have him uh, take another big injury like that, take him out for the whole season. But uh, Bengals look so good. Uh, they look uh, they looked decent over there. You know, first half, it was a... Uh, it was a, not a struggle, but it was it was kind of a close game, even with two left. But second half, uh, fourth quarter, they just I mean they took over the fourth quarter. They didn't do anything in the third. Scored thirteen. Uh, Dolphins couldn't do anything in the fourth. Big struggle on defense for the Dolphins. Uh, Bengals looking solid right now. Yeah, I mean, you, you basically t- took it all right there. It was a, a pretty good game for the Bengals, even before to his injury, obviously. But um, the the Bengals just they, they look solid. Obviously, this they're probably starting to get back into it. They uh, they looked uh, they looked ugly to start 0 and 2. But uh, like you said, Joe Burrow almost 300 yards, those two touchdowns. It was I mean they they, they kind of just took control of the game from the start. And obviously, you know, like like you're saying, just uh, uh, hope hope to uh, t- takes this time and really takes advantage and recovers because you you don't want to see him try to rush himself back. Let, let the medical staff rush him back and he, he ends up just uh developing just, uh, an even worse injury from what he already has I mean, you, you just know football is no joke and I mean let's just uh, I mean, let's just hope for the best and uh, obviously uh the, the both of these teams they're, they're still in great great standing obviously the Bengals got are off two two wins in a row so far so the, the, let's see where, where it goes from here. And with with all that said, let's let's move on to the Sunday games. Our our first one, the London game, which uh, obviously we we were up early to to w- watch this one yesterday to to record obviously the mini episode. But it was it was a pretty good game. Obviously, it came down to the wire. We we expected uh, the Vikings to to really you know I run did. away with this, but the the Saints they they stayed in there they they played a really good game obviously Andy Dalton stepping in for for the injured James Winston Red Rifle you know a lot about him after having him for yep. a couple weeks in, in in the past on the Cowboys he did, I mean he, he did all right he he yeah. kept him in it obviously it was a, a close game in in the end and Will Lutz had a chance to to send this into overtime but uh, an infamous double doink to the Somewhere, Cody Parkey smiling. This, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> pretty surprising. Well, that's missing to me. Really yeah. surprising. It, it, it was just, I mean, it, it was a 61 yarder. Thing, so, I mean, a, really, yeah. a really interesting one to watch. Uh, uh, let's just put it that most people were probably asleep while this was going on, but uh, uh, a great watch. Yeah, it was still a very good game. You know, it was kind of neck to neck. Uh, each, uh, it was pretty much neck to neck, basically, the whole game. You know, uh, at the end of half. Vikings did have the uh, was it, they did have a six point lead at half, but um, Saints really couldn't do much after except the, uh, the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, you know, Vikings scored twelve, Saints scored eleven. So Saints had the upper hand, the one point advantage. Here, but it really came just came down to the kickers, man. I mean, the Vikings kicker. Well, what was it? I for, honestly forgot his name. What was it? I, I can't name myself. I, mean, yeah, I forgot about we Vikings. Threw him a lot, so it's kind of. Yeah, well, really yeah, that 60 out. yarder pretty much yeah. sealed the game, man. That was a very nice kick. But, you know, Will Lutz had the advantage. Just a little bit off, man. Just a little bit off. Um, nothing really much other to say here, but Kirk Cousins had a, a decent game at most. Dalvin Cook did solid. Jay Jettas, Owen Marshawn Lattimore again. I mean, let's not, let's not get too much hate on Marshawn Lattimore. It is his first bad game so far, but... 
Jay Jettis did torture him for 10 catches and 147 yards. So he uh, kind of did help me a little bit on fantasy. But Saints right now, Andy Dalton is really going to have to step up for this team. Not us, and after Jason, uh, uh, Jamison. Jameis, what am I saying? Jameis is out for now. Vikings uh, progressed to 3-1. and Next to next battle against the Packers in the NFC North. So let's see where that goes in the upcoming weeks. So enough said. Let's move on to our next uh, 10 a.m. Our, yeah, our first 10 a.m. game, which was the Browns at the Falcons. This was another interesting game. You know, Falcons had a 10-0 lead in the first quarter. Browns tied it up at the second. You know, I have 10-10. So it's kind of like a kind of like a back and forth battle against them, and then obviously down to the fourth quarter, uh, Falcons came up uh, the underdogs over here. The Browns, Jacoby Brissett couldn't get the team going. Um, what else? Uh, uh, the Falcons defense kind of did step up a bit in the fourth, even though they allowed that one touchdown. I mean, it was a pretty close game. I didn't expect it to be that much of a close game. I low key expected the Browns to win by at least ten plus points. But, you know, the Falcons really did shock me this time, even though I thought they were going to choke. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, Falcons, they still look okay, even though it's now, uh, recently, Cordell Patterson's on IR. So he's going to miss a couple weeks. So that's a big loss to their run game. Cordell Patterson has been doing phenomenal this season so far. So that's really going to hurt him right now. And, but both teams are 2-2. Two and two. No, I have nothing else much to say, except they got a lot of work to do still. Yeah, no, and obviously we we both took the the Browns here. They've been surprising us recently. It's uh, they're just even even with Jacoby Brissett. Obviously, we we thought. Uh, I mean, from the start, we we, we thought. I mean, he's going to continue all this uh, th- th- this decent run that he's been having. But you know, fr- from the start, the the Falcons wouldn't go away. They they were playing playing really decent, and just uh in the end they outdueled him it was it was a close game overall and uh obviously this the score the score shows that a 20 to 3 to 20 win so i mean they're both two and two now who knows a lot of people expected the falcons to just be a, a bottom feeder uh fighting out for the for the number one pick but who knows maybe marcus Mariota can can will this team to you know just a middle of the pack type team and and uh, obviously that not much more to be said there. Move on to the next game, your game this week, Christian. The Commanders at the Cowboys. Go ahead and let's hear from you. I wonder if I do. So this is another phenomenal performance by Cooper Rush. He did have two turnover-worthy plays that just happened to be called back because of penalties, which kind of did up us a lot. Michael Gallup selling the plays good. You know, glad Michael Gallup's finally back. Got a touchdown in this game, 24 yards. I mean, it's okay. It's his first game back. Uh, I'm going to have, I'm really having high hopes for uh, Michael Gallup uh, for the rest of the season. You know, I really hope at least he can break at least 600 yards at most. You know, I think he can do it. He's our deep threat. He's doing, like, he's been doing phenomenal since we drafted him in 2018. I've always loved him. He's been living in Cooper's shadow most of the time, but now that CD's here, um, I think he's receiver two now since when CD is now the receiver one. But no, I still I love Gallup to death a lot. Really expect to do good, especially since Dak may possibly come back against the Rams next week. So we could see him and the Gallup connection. That chemistry between them is phenomenal. I love it. Uh, another disappointing game by Zeke. You know, 19 carries, 49 yards. I don't really blame Zeke on this one. I mean, most of the play calling by Kellen Moore was just just horrible. I mean, they kept running up the middle most of the time. I mean, we couldn't get anything going. But Washington's D-line D did stop him a lot, so I can't blame him on that. Uh, C.D. Lamb did phenomenal again. Another uh, above five catches, six catches for just shy, three yards shy of 100 and a touchdown. C.D. Lamb, you know, putting away that Buccaneers game, uh, that horrible performance he had. Really showing step up to take over Amari Cooper, and he's just looking really well. Noah Brown, too. Love Noah Brown since we drafted him in 2015. Love them. Love that guy a lot. He's been really, he's been a big help to us in his connection with Cooper Rush. Doing really, really well. Now, defensively, though, the the Rush defense was a, uh, it's a little concerning right now since we did allow over, uh, we did allow 120 plus rushing yards to, um, to the running backs. And it was, um, quite confusing since, you know, we have D-Law, Michael Parsons now on the D-line, you know, Odio Digizua, Bosan, uh, Dante Fowler that we acquired on the offseason. It was kind of concerning, but our pass defense was doing a great job. 
Our linebackers are doing phenomenal. Trayvon Diggs proving the haters wrong, locking up Terry McLaurin on 18 routes, only allowing, I think it was three catches for six yards or 14. It was under 20 yards, though. And then he had uh, three plas- uh, pass block. What was it? Yeah, three PBUs. So that was good. I loved it from him. You know, two of them, which were on fourth down. Um, you know, I think one of he could have got another pick, but he did get a pick too. Um, pretty much, um, the defense played well. We have Rams next week, so I mean, if that comes back, it could be a good game. If not, Cooper Rush is gonna have to step up. Um, Zeke is gonna have to step up again too. This is a bad game. TP not doing, didn't do well either. The rush game, the rushing was really, really bad. Commanders moved on to one and three, dead last in the division. Cowboys are t- Cowboys second in the division, three and one. Um, hoping the Eagles lose next week and um, nothing much to say. It was, a, it was a good game overall and I hope to see more of that. Yeah, no, you you basically covered all that yourself right there. Just uh, Cooper Rush going to 4-0 and as a starter. It's, it's it's really nice to see that from him and uh, CD with a, an, another nice touchdown, another great another great game from him. Just, uh, just an overall great game against a, a team that was expected to, to struggle, obviously. Um, uh, Carson Wentz, it, he he usually does struggle against the Cowboys, and you know that it, it was all, all all looking at exactly how how we, we kind of predicted it, obviously. And you you predicted a, another Trayvon interception, I think I remember. So just uh, a great a great game overall for your Cowboys to go up three one. So moving on from that, we got probably one of the more surprising games this week. We got the Seahawks at the Lions. And I mean, the highest scoring game of the of the week, 48 to 45, the Seahawks barely making it even after uh, a, a big lead, the, a, a really, a really big lead. I, I don't re- recall the exact numbers, but they they kept themselves at a distance. But as usual, you know, the Lions keep coming back. They keep chipping away, but it just wasn't enough as always. I mean, to just uh, look at the performers. Jared Goff went at three, 378 yards and four touchdowns. I mean, that, those are just great numbers, obviously. It's, he's he's really having a, a solid year, obviously connecting really nicely with TJ Hawkinson. It, it's just... Um, it, it just sucks when, when the defenses just aren't, aren't, aren't helping out. And realistically, if the Lions had a, a good defense, they could be 3-1, and 4-0. and and, But just... The opponents they've been getting, the the bad breaks they they've been having, it, it's just it's just pretty unfortunate to see that the Lions just really have to keep going through something like this. But in the end, the Seahawks go back to two and two uh, after uh, a really hard fought game, and just uh, obviously they're they're looking this that that NFC West. They're all they're all two and two right now, so we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes after you know a couple surprising results. Yeah, man. Like you said, I was the Lions. They keep punching and punching in, just coming up short. Like how uh, I've talked about in the past before and past episodes, you know. I want to see the Lions succeed, you know. I've had high hopes for them to see they have a good season. Um, really, 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 really hope that Jared Goff did well. He's doing well. It's, it's just that defense, man. You know, I'm starting to like the Lions more. They're pretty much the most likable team in the league, I would say, without hesitation. <clears throat> I mean, Jared Goff did a phenomenal game. So did TJ Hawkinson. Almost 200 yards, two touchdowns he got. But it really just came down to that defense, man. I mean, they outscored the Seahawks in the fourth quarter by uh, 12 points. But it just came too close. Even though, even if, even DK Metcalf, you know, had to get escorted to Kaduki. So it didn't change anything, man. It, it was really, it was, it was, I was really bummed out, you know. Um, that defense, they really got to step up. They're on pace to allow the most points in history. Since I think it was the Baltimore Colts since 1991, I think. But yeah, that defense, man, if they keep allowing this many points, it can be like a host, historically bad defense. I hope that doesn't happen, but it kind of does, so they can get rid of the Cowboys in 2020. So we don't talk about that. But other than that, let's move on to the next decently game, the Titans at the Colts. Um, Titans seem to kind of get their groove back. I mean, they, they play against bad teams, but... They won 24 17. Uh, Matt Ryan. Uh, Matt Ryan did outplay Tannehill. He did throw for 356 yards and two touchdowns. Derrick Henry, uh, he had another good game 22 carries, 114 yards. Touchdown. But I mean, hey, if Derrick Henry does well, Titans succeed. Like I've said before, 
Um, I mean, in the fourth quarter, it really just came down to the Colts, man. I mean, Titans could have scored in the fourth, neither could the Colts. So it was in the fourth, it was basically the defensive battle back to back. Um, nothing really other much to say. I mean, Titans, they played decent. Colts, they're still bad. Matt Ryan, I don't think Matt Ryan is the, the piece to go with moving on. Um, really expected him to um, step up this season after they traded him in March. I thought it would have been a good pickup uh, for Carson Wentz since they did get rid of him to the commanders, obviously. But, I mean, really, really looking bad for the Colts, and it wasn't the, uh, was the division battle. So, pretty much it's just the Titans uh, competing right now against the Jaguars. Colts, not looking too well. Yeah, and, I mean, obviously... <laughs> It, it comes down to it, just like you said, it, it's Derrick Henry who who really dictates how how this Tennessee team does. And I mean, yeah, I mean, nothing nothing too crazy. 114 yards, but it's a hundred yeah. yard game. That and usually, if he's in that hundred yard range, they they tend to do a little better. And obviously, you see that here. And I, this was uh, one of the two games that we disagreed on here, and you you got the better the the better of me here with with you taking the Titans. I expected uh, Michael Pittman to, you know, really start uh, p- picking something up. He did get a touchdown, or, or no? Well, I, I don't remember if he got a touchdown, but he did have a, a decent game. But yeah, obviously, yeah. that wasn't enough when Matt Ryan. He's, I mean, he, he still had. I mean, I mean, look at his his numbers, but it was kind of like garbage time numbers. He had 356 yards and two touchdowns. It was, it was just kind of not enough. Yep. And it, it, it's, not it's what enough. football, and that's what's going on in Tennessee and uh, in Indy. They're they're just still struggling. Obviously, it was a, a a good result against the Chiefs, but that kind of just seems like an outlier at this point. Just the way, um, just just the way they're they're looking in general. Just the teams they've been playing and just the way they look. Um, it's the I don't really have much hope for for my for me picking them to win the South. I, it, it's probably looking like either the Titans or even the Jaguars. Just just in that sense. But, I mean. Just uh, another pretty straightforward result here. Just uh, move move right along to another game that we disagreed on here. We got the Bears at the Giants. I finally did take the upper hand here. I got I had the Giants winning. It was a, a pretty close game, twenty to twelve. Uh, Justin Fields, a pretty pretty average game from him. He he only he threw one hundred seventy four yards, no touchdowns, just a. Uh, Pretty, pretty yeah, him. just just yeah. another another thing how how we've been seeing he's he's kind of disappointing we we expected him to to maybe pick it up a bit or, or somewhat to to really let me show he's that guy in in Chicago but you know uh, not much doing there I see Saquon he he had 146 yards didn't get into the end zone but it, it was enough to just you know get 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 the Giants going it was it, I mean obviously they came away with the win so. So that, that that's all they needed. Daniel Jones, he he managed the game well. The, the, that's what it comes down to. Usually, if if Daniel Jones can keep the theirs to the to a minimum, he the I mean at least right now how the Giants have been looking, they're they're gonna start winning and the three and one, they're they're looking pretty good. Obviously tied for second in the East with your Cowboys. It's um it's looking like a pretty good run. Who what, what could happen in the East? And let's let's just keep an eye on that. Yeah. I mean, going back to what you said about Justin Fields, I mean, I remember 22, 174 yards. I did pick him to be my trash player of the week, and I was correct. Um, I mean, with those numbers, I mean, I wouldn't have that quarterback on my team if we're being realistic here. He's not really contributing anything to help the Bears win. I mean, yes, they're 2-2, two and two, they're 500. It is going to be about to be the fifth week, but next week they're probably looking to be 2-3 and three right now. If Justin Fields can step up for the Bears... Darnell Mooney had a 94-yard game, but I mean, it didn't really help contribute to it. I mean, it was an eight-point game. It was a one-touchdown game. But I mean, if Justin Fields can't get it going, you know, if he can't stop just, you know, just these completions and then just like 11 completions and then barely hitting almost 200 yards, it's really not going to help the team at all. And that Bears defense, I mean, they did only allow 20 points. Still lost, but I mean, the defense is doing okay, but not the best. It really just all depends on Justin Fields. He's the quarterback. He's the leader of this team. If honestly, if by next week, if he doesn't get anything going, I don't think the Bears would be going fine this season. So uh, about that game, move on to the next uh, nail biter game: the Jaguars at the Eagles. Um, 
Honestly, it looked pretty rough in the first quarter for the Eagles. Jaguars did have a 14-0 lead coming into the second. Uh, Jalen Hurts with the with the pick for his first pick six of the season. You know, it was really a uh, tip drill. You know, receiver dropped it. Uh, receiver tipped his hands, and the uh, defender caught it and ran straight to the house. 14-0, but uh, you know <clears throat> that all ended after the Eagles put up 20 in the second quarter. So they had a six-point lead uh, coming into halftime. Jalen Hurts had a he didn't have that much of a good game. 200 yards, one interception. So it wasn't horrible, but I mean, it wasn't good either. It was it was a mid game for him. Miles Miles Sanders, he did well on the game. Twenty seven carries, one hundred thirty four yards, and two touchdowns. So the run game did help him a bit against the Jaguars. AJ Brown just five yards shy of a hundred yard game, five catches. So it wasn't too bad either. AJ Brown's uh, really good on um, pickup for the the Eagles. Uh, getting AJ Brown this offseason was. Uh, Really good pickup, you know, taking advantage of Miles Sanders. Miles Sanders, he's a very good running back. I mean, if the Eagles can keep utilizing him and using him, using him, getting him involved early, I mean, it's just like any other team. If you get the running game involved early, it opens up the pass game, leads to a better win, just like obvious. But with Miles Sanders, extremely, extremely good. You know, I would, he did help a lot to get this team win. I mean, it was, it was a close game. It was a close game. Don't get me wrong, it was an eight point game, one possession game. Um, I low-key thought Jaguars were going to win this. I wanted the Jaguars. Well, actually, I wanted the I actually, I chose, I chose the Eagles. We took the Eagles, but obviously, I mean, we, we both just yeah. looking at it. I mean, we chose we nice we, the Jaguars, Eagles to win. especially for you. So, I mean, we get the dub, but I mean, if the Jaguars were to win, I would have been mad. You know, it would have been division. We would have been up in the division. But as of right now, Eagles are right now 4-0. Um, they're the only undefeated team in the, in the, in the league. In the East, in the NFC East, um, really, that's the team to beat in our division. I feel like my Cowboys can do it. I have hope, but I am. Um, Jaguars. Oh, yeah. Just another thing, just to piggyback to piggyback off of that. They're four and zero. They're they're heading the East, and just uh, another thing to look at. They got a really weak schedule coming up. They, just in general, they they have probably uh, one of the easiest schedules in in the league, and that that's just another thing that I mean, realistically, they're they're a real a real contender to just. Uh, run away with it, obviously. But I mean, just just to go back to the Jaguars, man. I mean, sure. I mean, they're they're still the the surprise of the year. Like like you said, they they came out to a to a big uh, fourteen point lead to the start. You know, it was looking good. Know, but the the big thing here was uh, uh, Trevor Lawrence. He he had I think was it four turnovers? Was it five turnovers? He threw an interception and he lost four fumbles. And that that was <laughs> uh, the the big factor here as, as to why they. They ended up losing this. If it, if if Lawrence was to uh, take care of those turnovers, we could be talking about a completely different outcome here. And just uh, won that game. I mean, just, just imagine to have the the Jaguars to have them at three and one, and it's it's kind of unheard of after their their recent years, obviously. But yeah, I, I I'm honestly not even too worried about the Jaguars. Just the way the way they're looking, they're. They're, they're going to be a little better, honestly. I mean, yeah, they're 2-2 two two right now, so, I mean, yeah. it's, no, not, they're, it's not they're, they're, right now, but, I they're mean... They're respectable 2-2. Two two. There's there's a lot yeah. of teams that look iffy. They're probably better than a couple 3-1 and one teams, honestly. And yeah. I I got high hopes to see what they can do. Maybe even sneak into the playoffs as a 7 seed. I could see that. I could see that happening, but, again, like we said, Trevor Lawrence really got to work on those turnovers, yeah. man. Really, really hurting him. Yeah, if, if he does that, then, yeah. So, moving on. This is an, another another little surprise of, of this season. Uh, the Jets and the Steelers. Uh, the Jets coming away with a win, get, get getting our uh, our predictions off a little bit here. But uh, Zach Wilson finally making his return to football after letting was it, uh, Joe Flacco take over for a couple weeks. Yeah. And then he he had a respectable game, 252 yards, a touchdown. It's Obviously, he, wasn't, he, uh, he even caught a touchdown. Obviously, that's <laughs> when he he had that little little celebration. But I mean, he has more touchdowns than Kenny Galladay. Yeah. Imagine that. We just Imagine that. just look at him. Obviously, he was looked at as kind of a bust after his first year. On honestly, the same as Lawrence. I mean, you're it's it's early. It's too early to call. Being realistic, I mean, sure the the, the jokes come around real quick for anyone. I mean, look look what people were saying about Jamar Chase after that preseason where he had a couple drops and look at him now. So I mean, you see Zach Wilson. He he could be something that the that, so, somewhat of that uh, that franchise quarterback that the Jets have been looking for, and I mean, honestly, me personally, I I have high hopes to see what he can do this year. And apart from that, 
uh, just kind of another thing that the both of us were alluding to last week. Kenny Pickett finally made his his debut in the NFL. The the Steelers finally decide to to pull the plug, bench Trubisky, and yes. sure, let's let's call how it was. It was it was a shitty debut. First pass of of his career was picked off, which I mean, obviously you, you hate to see that. And I was he threw three interceptions overall, which that that's starting to to maybe just uh, turn off a couple Steeler friends. But let's be realistic. The I mean, two of those picks weren't even his fault. Uh, I don't remember in which order it was, but there was one of them that uh, the pass was thrown into double coverage right into um, into Chase Claypool's hands, and he just kind of batted it up, and and it ended up in uh, in in the I don't remember who who intercepted it, but it ended up in the Jets' hands. And this is just a it's it's early struggles. Call it for Kenny Pickett. Obviously, it's his, his first game. Just. The, the last thing you'd want to see is the media start killing him and just start, uh, you know, de- deteriorating his trust and, I mean, his his, uh, his confidence, obviously. And just as as a young quarterback, that's that's one of the, the main things for, for you. And, uh, I mean, I, I think he is probably the answer. Sure, he... He he got a lot of shit from from the start and for his his small hands or just th- small things here and there. But uh, I I think uh, moving forward the Steelers will be fine if, when, once they once they really start to to use Kenny Pickett correctly. But uh yeah just a uh, an ugly loss for him here overall. But let's let, let's see how they progress. Yeah, man. I mean, I think benching benching Trubisky was the move. You know, I lowkey thought after. Uh, you know, beating the Bengals in the first game coming back. I thought they were going to do well uh, coming 1-0. and It was the first game, so, I mean, I couldn't get my hopes up with that. But, I mean, I mean, Steelers, I mean, I mean, it's always a good day when the Steelers lose. So, I mean, that's something. But, I mean, regardless, I mean, Kenny Pick, I guess Kenny Pickett is the the move now for, um, going forward with the season. Um, I mean, I tend to like a lot of players – like as a character you know i like kenny pickett but i mean those interceptions were bad i mean if he's gonna be like matthew stafford too and causing a lot of picks and i know you're pretty upset about that i mean it's not gonna be one of the series one in three um pretty sure they're last in the division no yeah i think so yeah last, dead last in the division yeah. the bottomless pit um if they can't get anything going with kenny pickett then they're gonna have a tough quarterback situation and Steelers might come away with a top 10 pick coming coming up. But I mean, moving forward, I mean, we have another another really good game. The Bills visiting the Ravens. The Bills come back to take this victory. Josh Allen, 213 yards, one touchdown. Stefan Dix had a decent game, four catches, 62 yards, you know, not a not a big game for him. But I mean, that Lamar Jackson interception, man, costed him big time. Costed them big time, and it led to that Bills field goal. Um, I think the Ravens had a good lead, no? That they, they were choked 23. Again. 20 to 3. There 20 you go. They had a 20 yeah. to 3 lead, and they blew it just yeah. before uh, just yeah. before halftime, right? Uh, they or were after, 23, after. but they, the, the Bills did get a touchdown right before half. Yeah. Still, I mean, re- realistically, you, it's, it's they had a 17 um, point lead, man. This Ravens defense is just looking it's bad. Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters. Horrible man. It just Margaret Peters getting burned. Which, Marlon uh, bad. which one was it? There was a there was a fourth down play that that John Harbaugh ended up uh, having his his offense go for it, which they didn't end up getting. But it was just uh it was just something that he 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 could tell he he didn't want to trust his defense. I mean, with good reason, obviously they they weren't looking good, and it, it just sends a lot of a, a lot of messages through the league that um I don't know there, there, there's something up in in Baltimore that even though I mean look how how great Lamar has been looking sure not, nothing too crazy this game but overall yeah. Lamar is looking great in a contract year but uh just that defense probably going to kill the 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 momentum of, of this pretty good Ravens team it is too and then I think in the fourth quarter when they were trying to let the let the Bills score too you know letting trying to let him score and then who is that one player like oh Oman Oman something tackles them and it costed them a lot, man. You know, yeah, because the they ended up they, they ended up having like a good one, one like what they ended up having like a good one forty something left to go with the offense out. Yeah, so, and you you would think I mean just in, in any situation you you want them to 
just hey, they're they're gonna score anyway. L- let them score. Yeah, save let them score. Get the offense. And get your offense field, out. You know what? Yeah, you know what Lamar can do when he needs to come back. So could have been good, but I mean, it was just really really bad play calling too as well. So nothing too much there. I mean, Ravens moving on to two and two. Bills three and one, looking very very well to them. Uh, I think one in one in the AFC East, I believe so. Yes, one in the East. I'm um, Ravens. Uh, what are they? Are they are they first still or are they second? Um, I'm pretty sure they're tied. I think they're. I think I think it's a three way tie for first because everyone's. Yeah, two I'm pretty three. sure. Yeah, because Browns are two and two, Ravens are two and two, and Steelers are one and three, and then the. Uh, who else? The Browns. The Browns are also the two. Browns and two. are two and two. Which That's is the three we uh b- big matchup the Ravens are gonna have against the Bengals that's probably gonna give Bengals that's what I forgot that's yeah Bengals two and two that's there gonna you go yeah someone, uh, first place in that division so keep keep an eye out for that yeah and we'll just moving right along from that this was another pretty uh pretty uh easy game to call uh, as as it seemed but it it became uh, a little closer the Chargers at the Texans. The, the Texans dropped to 0-3-1 with this 34-24 to 24 loss. They're, they're still looking for their first win, obviously. Uh, Davis Mills struggling. But he he, he kept them in it. Obviously, uh, the, the the Chargers just jumped to a to a big lead. And it was, uh, I want to say they were up 27-7 at half. And Herbert, Herbert had a great game. Th- 340 yards, two touchdowns. And uh, I, I'm I'm seeing they they kind of just like let off in the second half, and obviously the yeah. the the Texans started to pick away at the at, at the lead little by little. But obviously in then I mean, Chargers were the better team here. They they move up back up to two and two, which that record I I feel like they're a lot better than that record shows. They they played uh, the their two losses are against two pretty good teams. So. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I, there, there's a lot, a lot of games left, and we'll, we'll really see uh, how, how, how this team kind of starts to take shape in, in the coming weeks. I mean, yeah, man. I mean, it's still kind of surprising that the Texans were able to put up 24 against the Chargers. I mean, I mean, it's possible since that defense is it's very inconsistent, you know. Um, I, I had, a, I had decent, I had some, uh, some hopes for this Chargers defense to step up, but they're just very inconsistent. I mean, it's really Jay Herbo just caring right now man and then getting Mike Williams involved seven catches 120 yards I would assume you didn't start him this week in fantasy I did actually oh so you're happy this time I couldn't even pull away with the win but hey I, he, he got me my points so that, that's yeah. all I needed right I mean Mike Williams I'm is Keenan I don't is Keenan Allen back I don't I'm not too sure not yet. yeah Keenan Allen isn't back yet so him stepping up for Keenan Allen doing well I'm pretty sure when he comes back uh, it would be better Chargers, like you said, they are way better than what their record shows. Two and two. Um, Charge. I feel like Chargers are gonna have a good season uh, this year. Possibly sneak their way in. I would want to say to succeed. Um, Jay Herbert keeps playing the way he's the playing. You know, playing good consistently. Mike Williams getting involved, getting involved early, and then once Keenan Allen comes back, it should be a wrap. Austin Eckler, we already know how he is. Great running back. Um, really, just gotta work on that defense and see where it goes from there. So moving right along, we got the Cardinals at the Panthers. Um, I, we came to a consensus on this one too, choosing the Cardinals with this one. Kyler Murray had a had an okay game, two of seven yards, two touchdowns. James Carter had a subpar game, but Mark Hollywood Brown, great game, six catches, 88 yards, and a touchdown. R- really good for him, you know. Especially all the controversy, he can't catch, he's not a good receiver. Always oh, he got uh, leaving Baltimore, he's not gonna do well, but. I, I, I'm proving the haters wrong. He does have his drops here and there. But um, I think he did have one half, one crucial drop. It was against, uh, I think it was the Raiders, right? Where they could have won it. Mm-hmm. I mean, they still won. I think the drops he was having was against us, against the Rams. So, there, I think yeah. so. There, yeah. I mean, he just does have his crucial drops. I mean, he'll bounce back from that. I mean, Panthers. Man, it's hurting me that Baker is not doing well, man. I really, really wanted him to do well, have his revenge season. Injured or not, I guess it's just proving Baker's just not good. I mean, look, looking back at that 2020 season, the pandemic season, they went what 12 and four, right? Or was it 11 and five? I'm not too sure. Uh, I think 12 and four. And honestly, if you just look at that, they 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 snuck in the playoffs as as a wild card that that season. But it was the Steelers. He, he, he played great. He, I mean, honestly, yeah. destroyed the Steelers in that in that uh, matchup. But just. 
I mean, it, it it is disappointing to see Baker like this. Obviously, we 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 both agree that. I mean, he's we, we really like him. He's a likable guy, but it just it, in the end, I mean, overall, this was a an, another one of those just I mean, slow games for him. I mean, even being at home, he he just he's not really getting much out of out of this move to to Carolina. It's probably going to be a a one year stop. Honestly, he he might be out, out in Carolina after after this year. They. They're probably gonna uh, start really trying to um, develop Matt Corral and really get him into that role. Probably getting rid of Darnold too uh, in due time. So yeah, yeah. I mean, this was a pretty straightforward game. There's just the, the Cardinals uh, overmatched them, uh, in all honesty. So yeah. moving on, let's uh, get into a, another really surprising game. The Patriots. Pointing at both. This, this game getting into overtime just uh, really surprising after. Obviously, we were wondering what was going to happen with Nomad Jones. Brian Hoyer started this game, and he came out with an injury, too. And it all came down to the rookie third stringer, Baylor. Uh, Bailey Zaffy. Just uh, a really uh, a really surprising game for him. Obviously, we, we alluded to him being that third stringer. Who knows what was going to happen with him? But uh, he, he it was his time to shine. And, hey, he, he, he was dueling with Rodgers, which... You you would think, I mean, down to a third stringer, this is going to be just a an, another game for for Rogers, but far from that. They he he gave him he gave him quite the run, and even though uh, in one of those fourth quarter touch in, in the fourth quarter touchdown, they uh they kind of came away with a with a little break that it was quite literally a delayed game on that, but right before the snap, but man, they they got the touchdown, they got away with it, but um. It was kind of a little disappointing to me to see that uh, in their, their their final possession before overtime, they kind of just played for the tie and, and played for overtime, kind of just to to kind of run the clock out. But hey, you you, you take it for, for what it is, and uh, the Packers ended up uh, on their second possession winning this. And I, I guess the the Patriots are probably going to be all right. Just a uh, Hope it's not a fluke for for Zappy, but I mean, it was a it was a pretty surprising game to say the least. Yeah, I mean, other than the Patriots, um, one and three, even though I I picked them to win the division, take so, them to Super Bowl. So well, yeah, I, I don't know what I was thinking. I think it was just a little a little, a little uh, uh, moment for me. But I mean, looking at the Patriots right now, I mean, Mac Jones, I think he's expected to return next week. So that's some life for the Patriots. I mean, look what happened last season. They started two and four. Magic think they're way into the playoffs. They get blown out by the Bills. But I mean, hey, you never know what could happen. But I mean, looking at the Packers, this was a very disappointing win for the Packers, especially that defense. That defense, I, like, they should not have allowed 24 points, especially to a third string. Yeah. Especially to a third string. It was really, really bad. But I mean, the, the Packers receivers are kind of getting into it. Alan Lazard went from 116. So it's looking good. Aaron Jones, I finally started him. Thank God. Got me good. Still lost, though. So, I mean, that, that's something. But, I mean, Rodgers, I mean, there's no reason Rodgers, like, should have barely won by three points. It should have been, it should have been, like, a clinic, if, if I'm being honest. But just a really, really disappointing game by the Packers. I mean, they'll be able to bounce back next week against who they play. Pretty sure it's the Giants, though, right? Oh, yeah, the London game. I think it's the Giants. Is it? Ah, it's the Giants. So, I mean, they're probably bounce over the Giants, but other than that, just a really disappointing win. So, moving right along, we have another, uh, I guess another okay game. The Broncos at the Raiders. So, uh, finally picking the Raiders. Finally uh, played off uh, Played off this time. They won 32-23 in the, it really came down in the fourth quarter. Uh, Russell Wilson couldn't get anything going. Uh, he did come with somewhat. Third quarter was kind of a little, uh, little bad. Really, just three points from the Raiders. Fourth quarter got a little interesting, but I mean, Josh Jacobs, man, he looked good. 144 yards from 28 carries and two touchdowns. Devontae Adams, another 100-yard game, looking very, very well. I mean, Russell Wilson. I mean, they're still trying to. They're still figuring out how the offense is gonna be, you know. Especially Nathaniel Hackett have the code, having the IQ of like a pair. Doesn't know what he's doing right now. I mean, I mean they're two and two. I mean they're they're worse than what their record says now. If I'm being honest, they're just they're yeah they're 
the record is because man, realistically, they've had a pretty weak schedule. So obviously, those they really had a weak teams. schedule, and it just yeah. really shows that. That I mean, look, the Broncos defense, you know, PS2, Pat, Patrick Sertain, he's doing really, really good locking up. You know, he was on Adams most of the time, but I mean, 101 yards. So I mean, what else can you say about that? But I mean, uh, the offense, man. And now, um, what was it? Javante Williams out with an ACL. So it's up to, so it's now on, um, it's Melvin Gordon, right? Yeah. And you yeah, see, Gordon. he already has four, he already has four fumbles. Four, this fumble, year. four yeah. fumbles, man. So like, that's going to be bad for the running game. If he cannot contain those fumbles, shit, the, the wrongs are going to struggle. Yeah. But I mean, you, you see realistically now it's, it's kind of, kind of all up to Russell Wilson and just yeah. the way he, he's been looking this year. It's, it's going to be tough. I, 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 I think I remember I, I put them into the playoffs. I don't remember about you, but it's just, I mean, realistically, this this is going to be a, a, probably a, a rough year for the Broncos. It was obviously a big overpay for, for Russell Wilson, as, as you know, in hindsight now. But uh, I don't know. I mean, what else can you say? It's just the, they, they've really disappointed. And I guess, you know, hope, hope Wilson can, can kind of get back into it this year. But it's lo- looking rough so far. Yeah. And, you know, well, let's move on to our big Sunday night game. Ooh, really ooh. high hopes for this one. We got the uh, rematch of Super Bowl Fifty Five and the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. I high scoring game. Yeah, high, high scoring game here. But uh, honestly, let's be honest. The the score is a lot closer than what the game was. The Chiefs absolutely dominated this Bucks defense. Uh, just uh, Mahomes just having another one of those games. And then I mean, so they they were they were up huge at, at first, obviously, and then it's just I mean slowly. They, they, they were kind of just like, you know, getting back out of the game and the the Bucks just started picking up points, which that kind of hurt me in the, in, in the other league I'm in. I, I would have liked the Chiefs to, to, you know, keep keep the points down on the Bucks, but uh, oh, well, the, the 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 Chiefs defense didn't really, really help me out here, but uh, it, it was a, it was a good game to watch. Obviously, just the Brady, the the goat obviously and then Mahomes the the big up and comer it's just just a a great matchup overall uh, a super bowl rematch and pop i mean who knows if if they meet again in the super bowl but uh this is just a uh obviously a big bounce back for the chiefs after a, a really surprising loss la- last week against the the colts and it, i i see them just really getting back on track uh, after um just a solid game over overall by them. Yeah, I mean, really good. I mean, my take. Uh, I'm benching Zeke for his CH. I'm gonna bench him, man. 19 points that he, I could have won. I could have won this week. I could have won. But no, Zeke decides to just go. Uh, give me five points. I could have won. I could have won. But regardless of that, it was a. The dominance by the Chiefs. They absolutely dominated the Bucks. Mahomes going, uh, like whatever, some magical fairy things, and then just a nice little patch to Clyde. Really, really good. I mean, Chiefs are gonna be fine. Three and one. Buccaneers two and two. I'm not gonna be too worried about the Bucks. They're pretty sure gonna bounce back. Mike Evans had a good game, but I mean, other than that, I mean, Chiefs dominated Bucks. And you pretty much took everything up, but the words out of my mouth pretty much answered it already for me. Bucks are gonna do fine. It was a horrible defensive game by that. Bad game for Brady. Even though he'll go for three or five, but let's be real. I mean, most of it was just it was garbage. garbage time. It garbage. was garbage time, not gonna lie, but I mean, yeah. what else what else can you do, man? Yeah, no, yeah, barely had a run game. But uh, I mean, yeah, enough said. That that uh that finished auction. No, I'm sorry. We have today's Monday night game. How could I forget? The Rams at the Niners. David. Ah. Uh, I'll, I'll let you rant for like five minutes. Well, I mean, let's. Uh, I'm gonna just tell you how it is. Um, I'm gonna take a while with this one because I got a lot to say. Let's go over it. Let's, speak, let's just speak, get started with. Speak, uh, I mean, I don't know. There, there, there's just so much to say. I guess I'll just start with Matthew Stafford. He, he's got to stop forcing it to Cooper Cup. This, that's just the the biggest issue I, I have with him. For, for the longest time it's 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 just I mean I mean what can I say every every time he's only looking for him 
if he's if he's not just making a poor read to just get it to him, he's waiting too long in the pocket to to just looking for him to get open. And even if the O line surprisingly gives him enough time, he wastes all that time and ends up getting sacked anyway because he's just looking for Cooper Cup. It it's just uh, one of the things that I get I, I get tired of seeing, obviously. And then when the O line doesn't give him time to 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 see Cooper Cup, they're just letting everyone get by. It's just that that's my another issue I have right now. The O line is looking really weak. Nick Bosa did have a good game today. Other I mean, line. credit to to D'Amico Ryan's and and Kyle Shanahan for what they're doing to to really exploit us. I I mean I, I would have expected to see McVay innovate a little bit. He that that's what he's known for. But I mean I'm not seeing none of that right now. Uh. I mean, I mean, what, what else can I say? Honestly, the defense was was fine. I mean, sure, they they the defense only allowed 17 points. Uh, dude, I mean, he, even I mean, Ramsey had a solid game aside from that that uh, blatant missed tackle on Debo on that 57 yard touchdown. It, it, it was just um, I mean, I mean, I don't know what to say. It was just a, a really poor game from the entire team except for Cooper Cup and I guess the defense, obviously. But um. Uh, yeah, uh, Matthew Stafford has to pick it up. Obviously, I mean, even even though they only allowed uh, 17 points, realistically, obviously 24 total, but it's it's that pick six that that made the 24. But the I don't know, the the, the defense needs to to step it up. Sure, they they did fine, but I mean, at, at least to to keep them in the game a little more and. I'll say I keep saying it. I, I keep repeating myself, but the the main thing for me is uh, it, it's Matt Stafford. You, you, and I thought the one silver lining I was gonna have was, hey, at least he didn't throw a pick. But then of course he goes ahead and throws a, a game changing pick six right here to, uh, to just kill put, kill the game, put the game away for the Niners. That was and, another pick too to uh, to Fred Warner, man. He like he dropped it. Yeah, no, dude. I, he he threw at least three that should have been interceptions and weren't and then obviously he just the just the cherry on top the the lost fumble it's just something that i mean this is this is just i'm i'm starting to worry uh, as a rams fan I'm, I'm you know it's kind of starting to be time to hit the panic button i don't know what 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 they're going to start doing with when, when this hangover is going to end but i mean let's just hope uh, they actually regroup this weekend cuz we got a tough game against the cowboys coming up and you pretty much said everything that uh, I wanted to say. Again, Matthew Stafford with those costly turnovers. Like I like, uh, like I said before, if he cannot, if he can't stop throwing picks, especially unnecessary picks, that pick six that he threw was that such was a great pass. read. Ugly. It was such, it was such a great read, man. And just that play call in general was horrible. You saw, what was his name? What, what was, what was homie's name? Oh, wow. Yeah, get a funky name. Like, like how? Uh, it was, how, 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 I just remember how, he went how, to USC, and that's. You went to USC, so I mean, yeah. at least something good for us. You went to USC, but I mean, it was just a great read by him, man. You know, pretty much sealed the game. Matthew Stafford could have had another one. Uh, towards Fred Warner, literally threw it straight to him. Literally, he kept wanting to target Cooper Cup, like you said. I mean, no, no, in, in the first half too. Really, uh, there was. There was the one that he threw right into the Niners' hands that he that that the guy missed, and then there was there was another one. I don't remember if it was on the same drive, but he had Higby wide open in the end zone, and he threw it like a, a good three yards behind him, right into a Niners defender hand. But I mean, he he, he got lucky a lot, but it's just he's getting I don't, know. I don't know what's up with Stafford, but he's having yeah, he's, he seems to be washed. I mean, I think it's too early to call that Super Bowl a fluke. I think it's a little too early still. Well, I wouldn't call it a fluke, but just realistically, I mean, uh, maybe let they, it say, say they lost it. I mean, oh. they obviously we lost a couple pieces. I mean, yeah. on defense, Von Miller, that that was always going to be a big loss. But then right now we don't have Van Jefferson, which He's I think back he, he could be back in a week or two. Which I mean, I for the sake of this team, I I need Van Jefferson back. And obviously losing Odell not only to a, to the ACL but possibly to free agency. I mean, we'll, we'll see how that goes. But you know, I, I would joke around saying that that I wouldn't mind losing Odell to get his jersey on clearance. But right now, I really want Odell back, just realistically. Um, let me all get that jersey too. But I mean, hey, NFC West having a mid off. They're all two two and two. 
So, I mean, I mean, it's basically up for grabs at this point. This early, it's up for grabs already. But, I mean, if Stafford, you know, like you said, they got a tough week against us. And as a Cowboys fan, we should feel excited coming into this game, knowing that that O-line is really, really messed up. And knowing we have Demarcus Lawrence, Micah Parsons, Lawrence Armstrong, Dante Fowler, Odio Digizua, Osam. It's going to be a good week for us. And that's what I'm hoping. That's really what I'm hoping. Really what I'm hoping. Do that, but, but I mean, I guess, you know, I'll, I'll end my rant there. I'll, I'll let us move on. And let's... Let's up, the uh, predictions. Yeah, that wraps up our our recap. Let's let's go on to the predictions, which was a lot better for us. We both went ten and six this week. It could have been eleven and five if, if I'm at five hundred. Finally, yeah. he yeah we um gear back to five hundred at thirty two and thirty two. Let's I, go. Um, I'm thankfully back above five hundred after falling right to five hundred last week. I am now. 34 and 30 that um feeling a little better hopefully this week uh we, we both uh keep stepping up but as it stands i am a, uh ahead on the leaderboard here we'll we'll see how that goes in the coming weeks i don't care but, what you're saying week two hold me i'm still not getting I'm over that. that i'm not getting over that week two hold the hell out of me and you know that you got that well you know that Slide dog, you know we that. had this. We had like basically the same pick, so I mean you can't really say much. Okay, it hold us. It hold us. It hold us. Okay. I'm not getting over that, but who cares? All right, yeah. let's move on to the predictions. Week five, let's get it started. Thursday night game, horrible, like boring, trash, mediocre, ugly blah, blah, game. Colts at Broncos. Why? What are these prime time games? Why can't we get like? Packers and Bills, uh, Cowboys Rams on prime time, you know. But instead, we're gonna see Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson have a mid off, like disgusting. Enough of the slander. I'm um, gonna go with Broncos. They're the better team here. I mean, they they have a little bit more chemistry than the Colts. Uh, Matt Ryan not doing well at all. He does have a thousand passing yards, but I mean, for what? It's not helping his team at all. I mean, JT's having an okay season. I'm really happy for Cortland Sutton as well too for the Broncos. He's doing really, really well, really, really well. But I'm going with the Broncos on this one. I, uh, their offense, I'm um, going to take over against that Colts defense. So, yeah, I mean, I guess we're going to start uh, start week five with with a disagreement like we uh, we usually don't. But oh, oh, oh. I think I oh. think I mean, come on, it's something's got to give. You you see you see how these. How this game? They're two pretty game. mediocre teams. It can go both yeah, no, it, they're no, they're I'm very gonna... mediocre teams. I yeah. think the Colts. Uh, I don't know. I keep saying this every week. I hope this week is, is finally the week. But I, I think I, I was... Micah Pittman. I I mean, look, if Micah Pittman can can go off, I'll feel uh, extremely confident to say that the Colts can win. And I mean, I mean, for my sake, I'll, let's hope that. Let's hope Matt Ryan can at least have a, an average game. If he plays average, I I. Fully well believe that that they can beat the the Broncos and he can outdo Russell Wilson. And I mean, I guess you know Jonathan Taylor. He he hasn't been himself lately, and if if he has a, a good game, that's probably all they need, realistically. So, I mean, that's let's see, move move right along from that game of mediocrity. Let's let's move on to Sunday. Uh, another London game, another nice early morning game that we're gonna have the the pleasure of watching as we do our our early morning episode let's start off with the giants at the packers or well against the packers from tottenham hotspur stadium in london this one they're two three and one teams they're two pretty good teams i'm gonna have to say the packers here it's a it's a pretty you don't want to hear me say the giants just because of how they're how you feel about that but uh it's a it's a good matchup honestly just just the way uh is obviously the way both teams are looking but realistically I, I don't think the the Giants defense is going to be able to hang with Rodgers I think it's it's just going to be a nice a, a smooth enough win the Giants will fall to three and two but I I think they'll they'll recover nicely honestly if you want to be realistic here this game could like could go both ways I mean this is going to be the first actual real matchup for the Giants you know, I mean, that they already showed how the, how the Giants are when they played us, you know. 
um, we took over that game. You know, I mean, it's just in general, if you can get a rush, if you can get a run game early, I've said this a lot before. I mean, this is basically football one on one. If you can get a rush, if you can get a rush, a really good rush game early on in the game, opens up the pass game, open up the passing lane, helps the quarterback a lot, leaves less pressure on them. Obviously, yeah. it's common sense. It's common football IQ. Anyone with an IQ of 10 can guys say that. But I mean, like I said, it can go both ways depending how both defenses play. Honestly, it's really going to come down to a defensive battle, if I'm being honest here. But I'm going to have to stick to the cheese heads here. I'm going with Packers on this. So moving right along to our 10 a.m. game. To start off the, to uh, move on from the morning, we have the Steelers visiting the Bills. Uh, this one should be a no-brainer. Uh, I'm going with the Bills on this one. Um, this is the game, Kenny Pickett's first start of his uh, NFL career. So, I mean, against that Bills defense, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say he's going to struggle a bit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Stephon Diggs, he's really, I, he's going to have a great game against those corners. Same with Josh Allen, going to have another wonderful game. So, I'm going with Bills. Yeah, honestly, that's uh, basically my take right there, too. I'm going to say that. Yeah, I mean, in his first career start, it's it's going to be a struggle against this Bills team. That obviously, yeah. I mean, he's not getting much help. His receivers really aren't helping. He's really just got George Pickens and then uh, Deontay Johnson. I, mean, I guess he has Claypool, but he's he's really having a down year already, yeah. even uh, further down from what he's he's recently been having. But uh, I mean, just to me, just uh, I mean, the, the Bills are going to run away with this. It, obviously, even being at home is just. Uh, Bills Mafia is just going to get right behind them. And I mean, to me, just the, what you, what you got to see from here is I'm expecting Pickett to have a rough game. Obviously you just hope the, the, the fan base doesn't go, go all ballistic on him. And the, it, it's like what I said on, on the recap of, of the Jets game. It's you, you got to let him settle in. You, you can't go crazy on him and, and start uh, like bashing him. He, it's going to take him some time. Obviously he's, he's a rookie and, it the one of the worst things you can do to to an up and coming quarterback is just uh, destroy his confidence. So we ran along from that. Another early game here. We got the Chargers at the Browns. This is a a, a kind of a pretty good matchup. You know the they're they're both two and two. Uh, honestly, I mean realistically to me, I I gotta say the Chargers here because I mean sure the the Browns have been surprising us. They're coming off of a pretty rough loss against Atlanta, which. I mean, the, the, let's see how they bounce back from there. But I, I just think, I mean, it, it comes down to a battle of, of who, who duels best, and and between Herbert and Jacoby Brissett. And to me, I'm, I, I've got to take uh, Justin Herbert here. He's, he's gonna, I mean, realistically have a good game. I hope, hope he, he keeps giving it to Williams, which that's something. Obviously, that's as 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 long as Williams uh, keeps getting the ball, that's gonna help me and. In another league, I guess hopefully Chubb can maybe at least get me a touchdown, so I, I can get the best of both worlds here. But uh, just uh, I'm going with Chargers here. Yep, coming to a consensus with you again. I'm going to go Chargers in this, in this uh, game. Um, I'm gonna keep saying this again. Run game helps a lot. I'm not gonna stop by that. If yeah, Austin, having Austin Eckler, that's going to help them all here. Yeah, if Austin Eckler ball. can get going really early, they can really like screw up that Browns. Uh, we can really ship momentum. It'd be easy for Justin Herbert, um, Mike Williams. Uh, is Keenan Allen coming back next week? Let's go back to Keenan Allen. Is he coming I back next? No, I mean, I, you you hope they, they can get him back. Because even just a, a really good... Uh, a really good showing from the Chargers already. And I'm sure they had some slight struggles, but... If they can get Keenan Allen back, then that offense can be really scary. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna agree with you. I'm gonna go charge on this game. Um, that Browns defense, again, it's uh it's not horrible. They're they're a pretty okay team for two and two. Don't get me wrong. But I mean, Chargers have the best of both worlds. I mean, they got the QBs, they have they have the QB, the receiver, and they do have the better uh slightly better defense which is not bad and even with the loss of jc jackson it's 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 horrible and then um keenan allen i'm looking at it right now uh doesn't look like keenan allen's coming back next week yeah it doesn't look like he's coming back next week hopefully at week six he might come back against the broncos 
So they're hoping for that. But besides Keenan Allen, I mean, Chargers, I got the win on them. You know, Justin Herbert's going to have a nice, nice, nice game. So uh, moving right along, we have a division, an NFC North division matchup. The Bears are going to visit the Vikings. So right off the bat, I'm going to go with the with the Vikings this game. You know, I think Captain Kirk can... Uh, uh, that London game was pretty okay. It was okay for him, but I feel like he can have a better game against these Bears, especially the way they're playing. Uh, the Bears defense, you know, I've also had high hopes for the defense, but that uh, those defensive backs, I don't know how they're going to stop Justin Jefferson. If Justin Jefferson, if he just so much to just get it going in just the first quarter, it's going to be uh, like a horde. It's going to be a clinic for that Bears defense. I'm just letting you know right now. Um, if Kirk's accurate with his uh, passes, you know, he's been a little iffy with them, but hey, Justin Jefferson is um, pretty, pretty much just going to decide this game. Mm-hmm. If he can get early going and that defense is going to stay good against the Bears, it's going to be an easy uh, W for the Vikings and then really good for the NSP North for them to compete. Packers. Yeah, you kind of kind of took it all out of my mouth right there. Uh, it's it, it's going to come down to, to Justin Jefferson. And I mean, maybe I guess uh, Dalvin Cook, it, it, it depends how, how, how he looks in this game too. Like, like you said, the running game, it, it always comes down to that. But uh, I mean, to me, I'm going to have to go with the Vikings as well here. Just, uh, you know, where we're kind of on the same page here. I mean, just kind of the, the only thing you could you could think about. I mean, maybe if, if Justin Fields has a good game, but honestly, he's just been struggling. It it, it also just really matters how 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 he uh, faces this challenge against, you know, a pretty good Vikings defense. And, you know, as we were saying about J- Justin Jefferson being the big thing, just the key matchup, I'm pretty sure they'll have Eddie Jackson on him. So I, I don't think he'll be containing him much, but I mean... Realis- realistically, I-, I see Jefferson probably coming with two touchdowns here, especially being at home. Just just that atmosphere is really gonna get to get behind him, and uh, I mean, I see the Vikings going to four and one here. All right, so moving on to another morning game here, we got the Lions at the Patriots. This is just another game, you know, with a uh, possibility of Mac Jones coming back. You know, you expect it. Uh, two teams that you know they struggle, but they're 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 pretty likable teams. You, just uh, just uh, re- realistically here, and I think that Jared Goff's gonna have a pretty decent game against this. Uh, uh, honestly, yes, pretty, pretty um, I don't know. I guess pretty subpar Patriots defense. Realistically, is what I would say. I would give it inconsistent. Yeah, I I, I think you could say that, but just um, yeah, I, I'm I'm have to go with the Lions here. It, it's going to be a close game, just uh, down down to the wire. But I think I think Jared Goff will, will get a nice a uh, nice game winning drive. Probably comes down to either a, a Williams run or a or a TJ Hawkinson touchdown here. Just that connection has been looking really nice throughout this season. Yeah, well, I'm gonna have to agree with you specifically on that. That, that uh, TJ Hawkinson and Jared Goff relationship is really doing well for them. Looking back at last game, he almost had a 200 yard game. Two touchdowns or one touchdown? I'm not, I forgot already, but it's, really, it's looking really, really well for them. Um, like, I'm going to go with the Lions here. I feel like it's going to come down to the wire, fourth quarter, again, with the Lions. But I feel like they can pull away with this one. So we'll go with Lions. So moving right along, right along, we have the Seahawks at the Saints. See, now this one is a little, uh, I don't know. I feel like this one is a little, little, uh, little hard to choose, you know. Geno Smith is uh, doing decently now. Rashad Penny's going off. Uh, Chris Olaf's finally getting his groove. I really want to say that Annie Dalton is going to help the Saints right now, but as much as I love Annie Dalton, I'm going to go with the Seahawks. I'm going to go with the Seahawks. All right, man. Uh... Honestly, just to me, I see, you know, I see the Seahawks are two and two, the Saints are one and three, but to me, the Saints are probably one of the best one and three teams out there right now. Just uh, even with uh, Andy Dalton playing, I'm, I'm not even sure. He's he's still going to be the starter for a good while, right? Just yeah, with, with James' cool injury. This year, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, just just to me, I really think just the, at, at the pace Olave has been going, I'm going to go with the Saints here. I think... Uh, as as good as the the Seahawks did did play a game against the the Lions last week, that defense is gonna gonna struggle because obviously they gave up forty five points 
in a win, which I mean, you, you, you take that for what it's worth. Um, uh, Andy Dalton's not a bad quarterback by any means, so I, I think he's just gonna fit right in with, into this system and uh, just uh, uh, probably not him, but I, I'll say Olave is gonna carry them to a, a pretty decent win here. Yeah, and like you said, uh, Winston's not gonna be able to come back for a while or fractured on his back, forgot about that, and his ankle injury. So, uh, Dalton's really gonna have to step up. I'm sticking with the Seahawks, pretty ballsy pick, but no, I am good. Go with them, man. We'll, we'll we'll see how these go. I mean, better to, to get some di- disagreements in here, right? Yeah. So let's go another little uh, divisional matchup here. We got the Dolphins at the Jets. I think we can both agree this is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, but it just the uh, the only thing to throw in here is uh, Tua is going to be out, obviously. Who's your backup? I don't yeah, Bridgewater, man. Teddy, two gloves. I think Teddy's hey. gonna. He, he's gonna fit in nicely. I, I feel like he's gonna have a a, a respectable run in, in this time where, while uh, two was gone. I, I don't think this this hurts their playoff chances too much. Obviously, I need to really see how their schedule is looking beyond this game. But I think the the Jets is gonna be a nice little game to ease uh, Bridgewater in here. Uh, I mean, by by no means is is uh, uh, Zach Wilson gonna be a pushover, but. I, I mean, I think just the weapons that that are at Bridgewater disposal. I I feel I feel the Dolphins coming out of this uh, relatively smoothly. Yep, going with you again with the Dolphins. I feel like Teddy Bridgewater can um, step up this week until uh, Tua comes back a uh, week six. Nothing really other much to say here. I mean, you got Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. I would say as a top five duo so far in the league right now. They really proved it. Um, I was gonna be fine, so I'm gonna go Dolphins. Nothing much else to say. So almost closing out with our 10 a.m. games. I mean, Falcons at Bucks. I mean, really isn't there really isn't of anything of much to say. I mean, I'm going with the Bucks for obvious reasons. You know, Brady, Fournette, Mike Evans. Um, this one's a pretty no-brainer. I mean, I don't really have to explain for it. So I'm going with the Buccaneers. I don't really gotta say too much about this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you here. It's, it's just the weapons Brady has, and especially coming off two losses here, you, you know he's fuming. You know he's gonna really want want to get get some revenge out there, especially against a division opponent. Yeah, <clears throat> it's just that everything lines up to have just a really vintage Brady, uh, just a, a great a great game for him here. And sure, uh, Mariota's been been uh, manning it re- really good here for for Atlanta, but. You know, something's got to give, especially now with Cordell Patterson on IR. It's, I mean, that he right there he loses his probably one of his biggest weapons, one of his yeah. most versatile weapons. So, um, it's pretty, pretty straightforward for me. I'm going with the Buccaneers here. And so moving right along, another another morning game. We're almost done with these. We got the Titans at the Commanders, which obviously two struggling teams. Uh, but uh, the, the Titans are uh, a little bit of a, more of a resurgence now. They, they're they coming off two wins, back to two and two. I'm going to go with them here. I, I really think Derrick Henry's probably going to have a, a a solid game here. He's he's kind of starting to pick it up little by little, and I, I think the, the Titans go back over 500. Tannehill, I don't see much from him, honestly. I'd like to start seeing them using Malik Willis more and more. I keep, I keep uh, saying this almost every week. I, I want him to start getting eased in more, but I mean we'll we'll see uh, if if this is the week or in the coming weeks when that happens. But I, I see Carson Wentz struggling here, and just uh like, like I said, Derrick Henry when he does good, the, the, the Titans do good, and uh, I see Derrick Henry having a solid game this week. Coming to a consensus once again, that Titans this game. I mean, Commanders. I mean, did they shut down the run against my Cowboys uh, yesterday? But I feel like this could have been a one-time game, you know, with Derrick Henry. But, you know, if Derrick Henry is not going to get going, Tyne Hill is going to struggle. But Commanders are struggling a little more than them. So I feel like Derrick Henry can get away with a almost 200-yard game here, maybe. I guess the Commanders, but I'm going to go with Tyne Hill. So closing our 10 a.m. morning games, we have the Texans at the Jaguars. Um... I feel like this one should be a no-brainer as well, but there should be a little, little, little debate here. But 
I'm going to go with Jaguars. They have the upper edge against the Texans here. You know, Texans have been putting up points lately. But Trevor Lawrence, I feel like he can go uh, have a good game. But he just got, he just has to, like, be consistent with those turnovers. Like, he can't be, like, throwing those, man. You know, he had five turnovers yesterday, an interception, and then four fumbles lost. Like, that's horrible. That was bad. But, I mean, it's the Texans. They're struggling a lot. Yet to have a win. Still looking for the first win. But Christian Kirk, he's been doing decent this season for that money. He could do better, though, even though he did crash that receiver market. But other than that, Jaguars are going to come away with this way, and I would say at least by 10 points. There's no agreement here. I'm going to gonna have to say the Jaguars, too. Just, I mean, you see two teams on in, in pretty different directions here. Obviously, the Texans still looking for their first win. Not, not really uh, – no, no real identity here uh, with this team. I mean, well – it, they're they're probably just pushing to to wait and see what what they're going to do in the draft at this point they're probably a top two top three pick here and and then you see the jaguars just a, a real a real resurgence com, com, coming back they're looking just a, like a really good team as long as like, like like we're saying trevor lawrence if he can just like play more consistent if i mean I, and just realistically against this texans team i don't think that's going to be too much of an issue i i feel like this game maybe he can ease himself in a little more but kind of use this to to prepare for better teams i obviously i don't have my their, their schedule right here in front of me but they're 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 bound to play some some uh, playoff teams in, in the coming weeks so uh this has to be some something where where uh, where trevor starts you know settling in and and obviously stay away from turnovers because that's what's going to end up killing him in uh, the season if, if he can't clear clean that up and so moving on, we got our first afternoon game of the week. We got the 49ers at the Panthers. Now here, obviously, we love Baker. We we love to see him. Uh, uh, we want to see him succeed here. But just to me, I mean, against the Niners after a game, just that obviously I just had to watch right now before coming on here. It, I, I see the Niners just really not not really struggling against against the Panthers team that's just looking. Looking really, uh, really lackluster so far. No, no true chemistry yet on, on uh, from from Carolina. So, to me, just uh, with all everything seeming to mesh so far for the 49ers, I, I got to roll with them here. I, I hate to to pick them, but you, you kind of got to the way they're looking. Yeah, I'm gonna take it with you here. Uh, Niners gonna come up with this win against the Panthers. Like I said, Baker's not doing the best as we expected you know it does hurt us since we do love baker but uh showing the after seeing the way they played against the rams they're, they're, they're gonna have a field day with the panthers so it's a pretty obvious pick here niners are gonna win so moving on to our game let's see so after seeing how the rams played today um that o-line horrible man really beat up um so obviously, there's gonna be a, an obvious disagreement here. I'm gonna go with my Cowboys winning this one. I feel like that defense is really, really gonna show their true potential against the Rams, against that old line, Demarcus Lawrence and Micah Parsons, the leaders of that the defensive line. Really, really, they're gonna bully. I really expect uh, some bullying to go around with the old line with that uh, against those Rams old line, you know. And if Trayvon Diggs, uh, he's really he's got to step up against Cooper Cup, man, because Cooper Cup, even if they're losing, he's still. He's, 400 yards is basically averaging 100 yards a game so far. So this is really, yeah, he is averaging 100 games so far. And it's, it's it's good for him, you know, but I mean, if it can contribute to a win, then I mean, it's just dead stats. Um, your D-line is also really good, I'm not going to lie. So the run game may be a little sloppy, but if Kellen Moore actually knows what he's doing, get a good run game, uh, we could possibly beat you guys. Um, we might have Dak back too. So, I mean, it could be his... Uh, First game back could be a good game, hopefully. But if not, Cooper Rush we're going against another team that is beatable as of right now. So I've got to stick with my Cowboys. And just like you said, it's an obvious disagreement between the two of us for this game. This is America's game of the week. This is uh, quite easily the one of the most anticipated matchups. And I mean, yeah, there's there's a lot of a lot of truth to what you're saying to me that the O line is gonna struggle, and I mean, yeah, against Michael Parsons, I mean, I uh, I respect his game a lot. He's a he's a really good player. Obviously, I 
I, I was one of the, the the guys that you know would always tell you I, mean, I, I have high hopes for him even since last year before he he really broke out I really liked him as a player and I feel I mean he, he's probably gonna get to Stafford a good couple times realistically and obviously Trayvon coming coming against he's probably gonna be matched up against Cup realistically and knowing Stafford he's gonna force it to Cup so I I see him getting a pick at least one pick honestly but but still I mean I just I really keep having hopes that that Sean McVay can can just really uh innovate this this offense I mean I I don't know what what what's going on in, in their minds just in the coaching staff's mind in general that there seems to be uh, no urgency to to fix all all these issues but if this can finally be the game that they do it I really see um probably hopefully more utilization with Allen Robinson and I mean just any other of our, of our assets maybe uh Powell or, or even Tutu Outwell yeah freaking Matthew Stafford would actually look to a Rob's direction yeah I mean it's just there, there there's a lot to look at I mean I'm I'm honestly uh really pessimistic about how how this team looks but I'm still gonna go with the Rams I think uh Cooper Cup just is gonna have still one of his his average game his, his I mean you say average games but it's it's just uh, a career game for for any other receiver and uh sure I, I do see Trayvon getting an interception but him being that boomer bust guy I feel he's he is gonna concede a pretty big touchdown on this game as well so it's just uh it, it comes down to to Stafford honestly to see how how much he can contain himself and let's also see if, if Aaron Donald can get can get through that that Cowboys all line here yeah so Moving on, let's, let's go on to just the, the rest of these games. Knock these out. We got the Eagles at the Cardinals, which is uh, a, a pretty good game. You know, two, obviously, the, undefe- the undefeated Eagles against uh, a Cardinals team that has lost to two good teams, but also uh, played two two really good games where, where they did end up uh, getting the win. But to me, I realistically see the Eagles moving on to 5-0. and This is probably not going to sit too well with you if, if it does end up happening, but... Uh, I think Jalen Hurts bounced back, bounces back from a. I mean, sure it was a win last week, but it was a uh, kind of a, a struggled win against uh, an up and coming Jaguars team. So uh, I think he he really gets the ball to AJ Brown and Devonte pretty pretty consistently. And uh, I, I mean, I, I don't think the Cardinals defense is going to have enough to to contain them. So just uh, the Eagles stay undefeated to me. I'm going with the Cardinals upset. I'm going my first ballsy pick of today. I'm going with the Cardinals upset. Now, this is this is very controversial. I'm not going to lie. But I feel that, I, I don't know. Right when I looked at this run, I'm like, Cardinals could possibly walk away with this dub. Ending that win streak. No, you're not and wrong, they, honestly. It, it's, it's, it's there. You know, it's not impossible. I can see that. No, there, it's, it's, a, it's a tight matchup, regardless of how the record yeah. is. It is a, a realistically tight matchup. I and mean, you see Jalen Hurts against Kyler Murray, two really good former Oklahoma quarterbacks. Kyler Murray, just, he just got to be consistent, man. He just got to throw the ball, bro. That's all he got to do. But I can see a Cardinals upset here. And if Eagles lose and we win, we're on top of the East. So it's good for us. It's good for me, you know? And then, you know... But yeah, I'm going with that Cardinals upset. I feel like Kyler can work his, his little his little five four magic, you know. So I'm going with the Cardinals upset. So after this little that little skirmish, let's move on to Sunday night. I think we got ourselves a good, finally a good primetime game. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at the yesterday's, which was another good one as well. But this is probably going to be down to the wire again. Bengals at the Ravens. Now. This game possibly may be close. It could be close. But I'm going with the Ravens on this one. Ravens is the better team here. Lamar Jackson, you know, another division matchup. The AFC North. Um, Bengals are hot right now. I mean, they won their last two games, which is good. Uh, Ravens, they have been, uh, I would say they've been choking a bit. not going to lie, but... Against a uh, division matchup, I feel like this is going to be another important game for them. The, you know, as obvious, division matchups are always way more important than non-divisional matchups, obviously. So, I feel like Lamar Jackson will have another bounce-back game and possibly beat these Bengals by, I'll say, 12-plus points. 
I honestly expected you to see the Bengals here, but hey. Well, to me, I mean, even with this uh, really struggling defense, uh, yeah. I really think they, they start picking it up here against the Bengals. I'm agree with you and, and say the Ravens come I mean, I'll give, oh, It's going to be a good game, both sides. Yeah, no, it's... I, like not, honestly, I mean, realistically, I mean, they're, they're both two and two. They're both not yeah. really playing their best football, but I mean, you, you do have to see the Bengals are, are coming off two wins. And I mean, just, uh, I just still don't think it'll be enough for, for, uh, for, for a victory here. I mean, I, I think that that little win streak ends here. Um, obviously Lamar is going to keep doing his thing. He, he's just having a, a really good year. He's a sneaky MVP pick if he keeps all this up, but, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say the Ravens defense steps it up. You know they're 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 really they're really down down bad right now. They're they're just they've been struggling. I feel like I don't know, so, so some of the leadership in, in there is gonna gonna really you know set the tone. They're gonna they're gonna have some talks throughout the week. They're gonna they're gonna really uh, you know hash it out in there and just ha- have a comeback game against a, a really uh, tough division opponent. This is, uh, like, like you said, a, a really important game to, to get these division games uh, under your belt. And, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the Ravens. And to finish off our, our previous oh, week five, we're going to go on another pretty pr- pretty good primetime game in Monday night. We got the Raiders at the Chiefs. So, uh, it's Obviously, the the records realistically they don't uh, rep- represent how these teams are going. The um, the Chiefs it, it does obviously, but the Raiders probably one of the best one in three teams we've seen in a while. They they've just been they they've been pretty unlucky recently. The and the, a, a tough loss against the Chargers week one, a, an overtime loss that you know it's a really surprising way to lose it against the Cardinals in week two and. Ugly game against the Titans week three, but throw that out the window, and they're 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 a pretty good team, obviously. But I mean, all that being said, I'm still gonna have to go with Mahomes. It's it's hard not to. I'm pretty sure he he just really thrives against the Raiders in in the what five years that he's he's been in the league so far. Uh, this is just a just what I mean, like we said, just another one of those divisional games. But I think the I think the Chiefs got this, especially at home in Arrowhead. Yeah, I'll be with you too. She's gonna win this one again, like you just said right now. It is at Arrowhead, probably one of the most intimidating places to play in the league, right? Arrowhead, <laughs> these fans, bro. I would want to say the Bills Stadium, but I mean, I feel like Chiefs fans are probably the atmosphere. You you think Arrowhead? That atmosphere, it's good, but in a way for the Chiefs, you know, for the away team, it's bad. That atmosphere, man, it get in your head. But yeah, I mean, just looking at the way they played against the Bucks yesterday, I mean. I feel like it's going to be an easy win for them against the Raiders. Division matchup, you know. And, I mean, it's always a good day when the Raiders lose. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, said, I got the Chiefs winning this one as well. And so. Yeah, that's going to wrap up our, our week four, pre- week five preview. That's uh, basically it. We we're obviously hope to, to keep a... Uh, keep everything here rolling we got i mean let, let, let's see how how good we can get our our uh, week five sunday morning chat out here it's gonna be uh morning after homecoming uh morning before you go to this uh cowboys rams game so I, i'm hoping to go to it you know yeah. so hoping. we'll we'll see how how uh how it fits in our schedule but we're obviously gonna do do our best to to keep all this going so any anything to close it off here, Christian? Well, that's pretty much it. That wraps up uh, episode six of the Big Snowball Podcast. We'll see all of you Sunday morning.